Are you ready for the best damn sports radio show on the planet? Man, our nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know we're coming to the list. Sports talking what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talking about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, then listen some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Then four and the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck, Mike, and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're at the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut you short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live all through your speakers. Go. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Bakasha here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com as we got new merch dropping this week. That's right, BC merch, Beastie Comb Signature merch is dropping, guys. The website, the website will be updated, updated hopefully by tomorrow. If I get my fingers are working and the t- work to cooperate a little bit, I'll get that updated and ready to go. So BC merch has dropped, guys. Check it out, manhourradio.com. And tomorrow, tomorrow and tomorrow only, during the show, we will be giving away a new Beastie t-shirt. Uh, so stay tuned for tomorrow, or tune in for tomorrow's show, as we will be giving away that right here on YouTube.com forward slash man hour. Speaking of Beastie Combs, let's welcome the man, the myth, the legend himself, Beastie Combs. What's going on, Combsy? What is going on, Michael Buckheister? What is going on, Man Hour Nation? 313 The Flash, Belly Up Sports, everybody out there in the UK, drinking your tea, eating your compass. Man, what is going on? Dude, sports are are going crazy over the last weekend. Yeah. Like, I mean, just the, all the playoff action in baseball, football, hockey starts tomorrow night. Man, I am, dude, this is like my, one of my favorite times of the year. I think my most favorite time of the year is when, when baseball starts up again you know opening day yeah and you usually have march madness tournament so that's usually my favorite time of year but this is a this is a very close second hands down october is the best best sports months out there period because you do you you literally have every sport happening right now either wrapping up or getting reared up to to start so i mean you can literally watch a new sport a new game every night in the month of of october and it's it's it is pretty awesome and my bulls might be making the nba worth watching again for me because man they look good so far in the preseason (laughs) they look so good yeah i mean uh it is preseason and uh you know uh you know what to say about preseason it doesn't matter same with like the nba regular season It, it doesn't matter either um so basically yeah <laughs> no i'm, I'm they still I'm, look good I'm, I'm totally kidding but guys we do have some fans popping copying in in here what is up drew so if you guys see drew drew has that little mark above his name if you're watching us here on youtube.com forward slash man hour that's because drew is a member here on on man hour he is a part of man hour nation he has become a member by simply hitting that join button here at the bottom of your screen and for 99 cents a month guys you, you get access to some a uh, promo discounts some behind the scenes footage uh some after hour show and then of course we have two two ninety nine deal where we get a little bit more action five ninety nine deal you you get a free t-shirt after six months of being a part of man hour nation and if you become a 99 member guys you get a hoodie every year you are part of man hour nation so there's the beastie merch out there there's the waffle merch uh, uh we're having cooking with tory merch coming up as soon as tory gives us some ideas of what he wants to do with that kind of merch and of course guys we 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 do have oh, the signature man, man hour I got logo an idea. what's that i'm gonna go to tory's house we're gonna take a picture of me hitting him over the head with a frying pan oh that'd be cooking perfect. with tory Cooking with Tori. I'm also gonna get it on video. And yeah. I'm gonna beat the shit out of him. Yeah, that with the oh, fry pan. <laughs> viral 101 right there. I mean, like I was thinking of like a silhouette of like him like opening like a oven and like all the smoke. Come I'm gonna be out. like uh like yeah. like Medea. I'm gonna be <laughs> say Packers one more time. Say Packers one more time. <laughs> say it. Say it. Say. It. Also, guys, we we do have. Uh, so somebody just bought a uh, Beastie shirt there. That just come. Uh, dang. Did, did you see that, Combs? Somebody just bought a BC shirt, and it's up on the screen. So thank you forever who bought that 
bought that beastie mer- that be- beastie oh. merch there. So uh, I they, like it. They bought the uh, claw one, so it has the word beastie with like with the claw cutting through it. it yeah, I mean, that that's looks- my favorite one. I like that one. Yeah. The the bear head one's cool too with the crown because it kind of like goes with our logo, the the MH with the crown. Mm-hmm. You know, I I I really like it. Um, that beastie one though with the claw going through it. That look, Liz did Liz did a great job coming up with the ideas. Yeah, I definitely tweaked them a little bit just to just to you know make them pop a little bit. But these this is her her idea. This was her. It, you know what's funny is that this all came from a mix up. Yeah, she thought you were calling me BC, <laughs> even though you were only calling me BC. But out of that, we've got this merch, and I mean, like you said, from from the time that we put it up today, this afternoon, it's been selling like hotcakes. So yeah. get your stuff before before it sells out. Hey, BC merch might be the first thing on manhourradio.com to sell out. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, Combs, you might have to update your Twitter handler too. So at Manhour Combs is uh. It's kind of old now. Yeah, no, you like they have to put man hour underscore beastie on it. So there you go. And then, but you guys can find find me at on the old Twitter scene at man hour underscore buck. But to but to get into tonight's show, guys, we do have a poll going up over here at youtube.com forward slash man hour. And the poll is: Will the Kansas City Chiefs make the playoffs? So to vote, you you point explanation point vote with yes or no. Uh, So. So we do have some votes rolling in. Drew voted yes. Uh, I'm going to vote no, uh, and I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Uh, and Combs, that leads us to our first topic of the night. The Buffalo Bills fluxed on the Kansas City Chiefs last night in the Sunday night football game, 38-20. to yeah. Are the Buffalo Bills the best team in the AFC, Combs? In the AFC... Yes, but it's close, and it's a team we're sleeping on that's really, really close with them, and that's the Chargers. The Chargers are are right there, neck and neck. Uh, and the Chargers are just one of those teams that are just, I mean, there's everybody's sleeping on them because I think it's just because they're the Chargers that everybody's sleeping on them. But no, the Buffalo Bills are are the real deal. Like they they are scoring points at an insane rate you know i kind of i went off last week on on a uh, bus uh, about our about his rankings and having buffalo number one look the cardinals are still five and oh and that's what i went off on him about he had the cardinals at three and he had the bills at one i said his homerness was going in there but they are scoring points at an alarming rate yeah. now the kansas city defense not really all is cracked up to be, you know. So, so that's I, you know, we'll get into that here in a little bit. But I, that Buffalo, I mean, they, they've scored what like 146 points in their last four games. Hell. I mean, that's that's an alarming number. Hell, just think. I mean, of that's, their that's last almost three. 40 points a game. I mean, just their last three, what they scored 38 against the Kansas City Chiefs. They scored 40 against the um, yeah. They what they shut out the uh, uh, Houston Texans, right? And then they scored yeah. 34 versus the Miami Dolphins. Granted, they gave up like 28 that game, but but still, or 24. But but the, yeah, that, and but, even before that, yeah. I mean, they so opening game they lost 23 to 16. Since then, they've won 35 to nothing, 43 to 21, 40 to nothing, and 38 to 20. Yeah, the, the Buffalo Bills are the real deal. Yeah, uh, they're good. My Super Bowl pick looks really, really good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely pump your chest about this one just because, you know, after that first week, Holmes, we were kind of like, well, maybe they're not all as cracked up as like as, as we thought they would be, right? Like, well, just uh, maybe, maybe not. I told you but, to calm down. Weird stuff happens oh, week one. Yeah, but, man, these last four weeks, they've been flexing on the entire NFL, no doubt about it, in my mind. And – they might, they may not be the best team in the NFL per like offense and per defense, special teams, and like et cetera. But they are the most complete team in the AFC, hands down. They can beat you on both sides of the ball. If you want to have a shootout, they can beat you in a shootout. And if you want to have a defensive slugfest, they can beat you in a defense of slugfest. So, I mean, right now, Combs, hands down, in my opinion. The Buffalo Bills are the most complete team. Are they the best team? No. I have to give that to the Chargers. Just just like what you said. Wow. Like I, I think the Chargers are the best team in the AFC right now. 
with some teams making some noise here late, maybe uh, we'll get into two in that and to that l- l- later. But I mean, the Chargers to me is the, is the most com- 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 complete team, and this is coming from a Kansas City Chiefs guy. You know, I mean, my Kansas City Chiefs, right? So, man, their their resume right now is pretty impressive. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, Washington. All right. It's Washington, so whatever. And then they lost to the Cowboys. But, hey, on the flip side of that Washington football team, we thought they were going to be a damn good team. Or let me let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, yeah. let me, let me rephrase that. Tory thought they were going to be a damn good team. 13 and 4, yeah, I, like, yeah. I, like I believe their reference was. I had them at 9 and 8, 8 to 9. So Yeah, but you had the Lions at 11 and 6, so. True, ten and six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so whatever. But then the, you got the. But then you know they beat the Chiefs, the Raiders, and the Browns. Yeah, all good teams. And, and they've scored a lot. Of, I mean, they scored thirty against the Chiefs. They put up twenty eight against the Raiders, and they put up forty seven against the Browns. And that Browns defense has been very, very good. And you know, somebody came at me on. Well, didn't really come at me. They posted on Facebook and said, you know, the Browns showed that they weren't elite. And I said, or. The Chargers showed that they were. Oh. Because that one. was yeah. back and forth, like back and forth. And when you play really good teams like that, you're going to get that back and forth, back and forth. You're going to get that 47 to 42 type game. And it doesn't matter how good your defense is. It doesn't matter how, because the offenses are going to find a way to score because they need to in order to keep up. When you get caught up into a shootout, I mean, you look at the Rams a couple years ago when they were playing the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Everybody was talking about how high I score. Yep. Both of those defenses were very, very good that year. Both of them were. And that game ended up what? I was the final score of that one? It was like 55 to 53 or something. Yeah, it Stupid. was the highest money scoring guy, Monday night game scoring ever, right? Yeah. So sometimes your defenses will, will have those games, especially when you're going up against other elite teams. I think the Cleveland Browns are for real. But I think the Los Angeles Chargers are even more for real. I look. I am a big, big believer in Justin Herbert. Yeah. So I, I was a big believer in him before he got drafted, and I, I thought he was probably one of the better quarterbacks in that draft. And he's proven me right. And and he's really, really proven your theory of rookies need to sit for a year wrong. Yeah, so a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, there is no doubt in my mind. I mean, I've been along with, I've been wrong with a lot of stuff in the NFL this year, unfortunately. But we will definitely be be <laughs> talking more about the Browns Charger games here in hour number two of the man man hour. But I want to swing back here to the Kansas City Chiefs. Here, the Kansas City Chiefs are now two and three on the season, Combs, and they are a sinking ship. Let's just be flat out honest about this. What do you think is wrong in Kansas City? The defense. I mean, look, you can't go through games giving a they're av- they're giving up thirty two point six points a game, and you can't do that in the NFL. You cannot do that in the NFL. You can't go in, in into these games. I don't care how good your offense is. You can't tell your offense, "Hey, look, you need to get us thirty five to forty points a game in order for us to win." That just puts too much pressure. I don't care who the quarterback is. I don't care who the receivers are. I don't care who it is. That's too much pressure on the offense. Even in their two wins, the Browns and the Eagles, they gave up 29 points to the Browns. They came back and won that game. And they beat the Eagles, but they gave up 30. Other than that, they gave up 36 in a loss to the Ravens. They gave up 30 in a loss to the Chargers and 38 in a loss to the Bills. This defense is not holding up their end of the bargain. And I know that they're a late-blooming defense. Everybody wants to keep reminding me, oh, they don't show up, blah, 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 blah. That's fine if you're a late-blooming defense, and and that's one of those things. You better start blooming now, though, because if you find yourself in a hole, which the Kansas City Chiefs, they they do get a kind of a, a, a weak schedule over the next few weeks. They got Washington, Tennessee, and the New York Giants. But then you get the Packers, Raiders, Cowboys, Raiders again, Chargers. Like, that's a rough schedule. You can find yourself real quick, real quick in a position where you're like four and eight, four and nine. And yeah. that could be a problem. <laughs> you, you know what? You can say they have a weak schedule moving forward here, but teams right now are, are uh, they used to have Kansas City circled on their roster. Now they're erasing that circle. Like, well, this is, this is, this is, this is a dub, right? Uh, but, Combs, you are absolutely right. What is wrong in Kansas City? 
It's that defense, 100%. Steve Spagnola, defensive coordinator, cut his ass right now. Find somebody else. Terry Braden, the offensive defensive line coach, get his ass out of there too. How about this? Braden Daly, run game coordinator, defensive line coach, get your ass out of there too. You can't get pressure on a goddamn quarterback. And, Good and, God. And fire suck. Eric Bieniemy and send him to Chicago. Oh, uh, sorry. How sorry, about, I had to sneak how, that in there. How about this? <laughs> Darnold D. Olsen, uh, the defense assistant. What are you the assistant of? Giving up 80 points a game? God, you suck. Get your ass out of here. Lie, lie, lie. Out of here too. How about this? Kevin, or sorry, Ken Beloje. Outside linebacker coach, we run at 4-2. Where's the outside linebacker at? Mind blowing because you can't make a goddamn tackle anyways. Get your ass out of here too. How about this, Combs? <laughs> Defensive quality specialist, Connor Embry. He's a quality control. He, is, he wants to bring quality to the defense. My man, you aren't bringing any freaking quality to this goddamn defense whatsoever. You are absolutely higher. You're fired too. How about this? Linebacker coach, Matt House, teach your motherfuckers how to tackle. God, you guys suck. <laughs> um, how about this? Uh, uh, defensive back and coordinator, Sam Madison. Sorsen got burned t- four oh. times on Sunday night. Wide open, 20-yard gaps. You're, you're gone, Sam. Oh, so we have a defensive backs and coordinators coach, and then we have a defensive backs c- coach as well, Dave Merritt. You're gone too, buddy. Man, the Kansas City defense, this is the worst freaking defense combs I've ever seen in my whole entire life. I so I heard a fact earlier today that the greatest show on turf, the St. Louis Rams from 2000 with Kurt Warner, Terry Holt, uh, Marshall Falk, and like all those guys, they were averaging seven yards a play in 2000, Combs. Yeah. The, Kansas, the Kansas City Chiefs defense right now is giving up 7.8 yards a play. So th- they are giving up more yards to offenses that should be giving up three to four yards of play tops. I mean, th- th- this is historically bad defense, Combs. I have never seen nothing so pathetic in my life. Like, <laughs> literally, the, they could they could be a lockdown defense for the next 15 weeks and probably still rank 32nd in every defensive category in the NFL. They are that freaking bad. If they do not turn it around quick, Combs, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be outside looking in, finishing at a 9-8 and eight r- record as like a eight seed in the playoffs. Oh, guess what? There aren't eight teams in the playoffs, Combs. There's only seven. They're going to miss the freaking playoffs, Combs. Good God. They are that freaking bad right now. Uh, you sound like me after the Bears lost to the Cleveland Browns. Yep. You sound like me talking about the Bears offense. Like, I mean, you you just want to – Buck said fire everybody not named Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And Andy Reid. I will. I mean, <laughs> no. So I will take. I will. I, I will keep. Uh, Mike Fraser. He is the statistical analyst coordinator. What? It, that's a fancy term that I hold a clipboard on the sidelines and I get and I get and I get my stats wrong nine nine out of ten times. Dude, that's what. But his you know job what? Is. For 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 his paycheck. For his paycheck, I'll stand on the sidelines and I'll hold the clipboard too, and I'll be the statistic (laughs) analyst coordinator. As you can call me whatever the hell you want, I'll be your damn water boy. Me, I like honestly for that much money. At this point, and for the Kansas City Chiefs, say me of the of the fans in, in general, you need to keep two people on this coaching roster. Period. Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy. That's it. Everybody else gone. Higher high school staff, they could probably coach a better defense right, right no, no, now than don't, Steve Spangola Don't can. save Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy needs to come to Chicago. You know what? Have him, Combs, because you guys are great right, at forming fine. head coaches, right, Matt Nagy? No, hey. You guys like our sloppy seconds. We're, we're, gr- we're great defensively. We just need somebody who can develop a quarterback. You know what? And somebody who can run an offensive game plan, and I think Eric Bieniemy is that guy. Take Steve Steve Spag Steve Spag. No, I mean he, you keep he was Steve great. Spagnola. He was great in New York, right, guys? I mean, because by we've golly, already got a guy who can't run an offense. Why Jesus. do we want Steve Spagnola? <laughs> like uh, when the Kansas City Chiefs hired Steve Spag Steve Spagnola, it was the most head scratching hire in my whole entire life. I'm like, this guy was giving up 30 plus points with the New York Giants. Why do you want to bring him to Kansas City? Oh, we have better talent. Uh, d- Combs, name three players on the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Uh, Honey Badger. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. The honey badger. Okay, yeah, okay. And Chris and, Jones, uh, the honey Mr. Badger. Mr. Felony Chris Jones himself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Jones. Yeah, I forgot about Chris Jones. The Kansas City Chiefs has nobody on the defense columns. It is absolutely horrendous. It pisses me off each and every day that I watch the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs, Chiefs now. And now that the offense has come crashing back down to reality. Smash Mouth from 1988 or 1998, I should say. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is... It's sickening to watch Combs. Sickening. So, I mean, they do it. They got. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. He. It's a basketball name too. Eric Swarson, the guy that got burned no. five times deep last uh, night. Okafor. Okafor. Mm, yeah, the safety. It, it, isn't that like uh, the the kid's uh, brother or cousin or something from the? I believe he plays for the. Maybe the Grizzly. I don't even I know. I have no idea. I know he plays basketball. There's, there's he should probably go play basketball because he sucks, too. Get his <laughs> ass out of there. <laughs> Combs, I would take the Houston Texans defense right right now over the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Matter of fact, give me the Houston Texans front office, and I'll put them on the defensive side of uh, the ball, and I bet you they at least rank 30th. Yikes. That's how bad the Kansas City Chiefs are. So I just I just looked it up. Okafor has three solo tackles this year. Yeah, congratulations. Zero sacks, bro. zero forced fumbles, mm-hmm. zero interceptions. He's tied for 89th in interceptions, tied for 97th in forced fumbles. Yeah. Uh, he is over 150 uh, ranked in sacks and over 150 ranked in tackles. Sounds like he's having a great season. Yeah. Yeah, about we'll, that. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, sign him to a $15 million five-year extension in the offseason because, you know, by golly, we need that, don't we? That, Jesus. L- let me ask you. I think they'll sneak into the playoffs. I think they'll be a wild-card team. They will. In the playoffs. That's the, only, that, that's, the only, that's the only way they can. Yeah, because there's no way. I mean, look, unless you see a monumental collapse by the Chargers, I mean, you've got to make up three games now. Yeah. Because the Chargers to the to the Chargers uh, uh, own the head-to-head tiebreaker too, right? So it's four games. Well, isn't it? yeah, but they'll play them again, and so it's it they're they're four and one, and the Chiefs are two and three. Now, you know, maybe you woke up a sleeping giant because I did say I I had them with three losses this year, but I had them starting the season zero and three and then winning fourteen straight because they're that talented. They really are. Yeah, but now, they they also have Smoke and Joe on their roster now too, so they might be sleepy still. That's true. How did he play this week? Did he, did uh, he, he had really he had one catch and he got like three holding calls. So, oh, so he was like uh, he was like OBJ for the Browns. Yeah, yeah. But right. he is a big bodied receiver that Kansas City Chiefs need to need apparently from what the experts say. But mm. whatever, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but guys, we are going to take our first break on the night. On the other side You're of the mad, break, mad. we are going to talk some Liz's. Denver Broncos are they the worst? Were, were they the worst three three and zero team ever? Uh, because they dropped down to three and two now. Uh, so we'll oh, talk about that. Three and zero last year. And the Pittsburgh Steelers. And of course, we're going to talk about your man, Mister Top Ten himself. I'm going to leave that right there. Leave a little bit of cliffhanger, guys. We'll be right back here on the Man Hour. Stay tuned. <laughs>
And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and I. Beastie merch is now live at manhourradio.com, so be sure to check that out. We'll, we will be giving away some Beastie t-shirts tomorrow, so be sure to tune in here at youtube.com forward slash man hour. That is October 12th if you're listening to this, uh, you know, in podcast or radio form. So October 12th, Tuesday, uh, we will be giving away... Beastie merch live at youtube.com forward slash man hour 8 p.m. East Coast time to 10 p.m. East Coast time. So uh, it is free to enter and it is just a raffle giveaway. However, you do have to be a subscriber on the YouTube channel to win. So, guys, we've talked a little bit of the Kansas City Chiefs, but now it is time to talk about Combs' man, the myth, the legend himself, Jameis Winston. Combs. Jameis Winston threw for four touchdowns and one interception on Sunday in week five NFL action. Are we ready to admit that Winston is better for the Saints than Drew Brees was this last season? I said it last year. Um, you know, and, and the funny thing is they still haven't opened him up. They still have not allowed him to to do the things that he was doing in Tampa Bay, which is obviously I know people are going to say, well, yeah, throwing for interceptions. But throwing for 5,000 yards and 30-plus touchdowns in the season. Um, you know, I, I really like – Jameis Winston, I, I've been very vocal about him being a top 10 quarterback in this league. I've been very vocal about him being the best quarterback on the Saints roster. That being said, I'm going to slow down just a little bit. Because, yes, he had four touchdowns and one interception. But he was 15 of 30. He threw for 279 yards. His rating was a 108.2. That was his passer rating. But he was 15 of 30. And that's concerning. When you're only completing 50% of your passes, it's a little concerning. And what he's doing this season, um, you know, is is 60% of his passes. So I, I want to see a little bit more production. I want to see them open it up a little bit more. I think they're getting to that. They did that a little bit against Washington. Uh, I think his long was like 72 yards. Um, so and I think that was actually the longest pass of his career as well. Um, so maybe they'll start to open him up. Maybe they'll start to let him loose. They're going to have to uh, with their schedule coming up. That schedule that the, the New Orleans Saints have, I mean, they've got – can't remember who they have this way. I know they've got the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming up in two weeks. Uh, they got the Seahawks this weekend uh, on uh, Monday or next Monday night, and then Falcons, Titans, Eagles before they get to Buffalo. And I mean, these are some teams that you can really open it up on. The Buccaneers, you can absolutely open it up on, and they've showed signs of of being that defense where you can score with them. So. That's what I want to see out of them. I think Jameis has it in him. I would just want to see them allow him to do what he can do. And if he throws two or three picks, but throws for five touchdowns and throws for, for you know, 500 yards, I'm okay with that because you're coming out with a win. That defense is good enough to overcome, you know, one or two interceptions. So I'm okay with, with Jameis Winston you know, throwing a couple picks here and there because I I'm okay with a guy who's thrown for five thousand yards and thirty touchdowns, even if he's throwing eighteen interceptions in a season. Not the thirty that he threw in Tampa Bay, but I think that was the aberration. The guy's average only sixteen a season for his career so far. So the the fifteen to, to eighteen range, I'm okay with that from a Jameis Winston if he's throwing for five thousand yards and thirty plus touchdowns. Yeah. Uh so on the flip side of that, you said you want them to push the ball down the field per se. But if you think about this, Michael Thomas is out. Like, he is on the IR, and I, and I, and I don't think he's he's coming back this season because, you know, there's rumors yeah. of him wanting to trade, it's like, it's like, et cetera. So when you look at the wide receiver depth, they have Marquez Callaway and Kenny Stills. That's pretty much all of the receivers that they have. And so when you take away that down that downfield threat that – Michael Thomas had yes, Kenny Stills can still open it up a little bit, but there's a reason why he's been on four different teams in four in four years, right? It's just yeah. like he, he is just not that good of receiver. Uh, so when you look at it, the best the best playmaker that the Saints have on their team is Alvin Kamara, and he is a running back. 
And that's when you so, nickel and dime down the field. And I think that's how the Saints are going to have a lot of success this year is nickel and dime and down the field. Let me throw this at you. Okay. The Cleveland Browns are clearly, and Baker Mayfield especially, clearly not in love with Odell Beckham Jr. Right. Should the Saints make an offer for Odell Beckham Jr.? I mean, you could probably get Odell Beckham Jr. for a fourth-round pick. I'd give up a fourth-round pick for Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, Look, I, I know he's not the greatest route runner, yeah. but the guy's got hands. He does the have guy's hands. got really good hands. And if he develops a chemistry with you, <clears throat> that's going to make, what's his name, Marquez um, Callaway, that's going to make him even more dangerous. True, true. I, I, I see what you're saying, but besides the big catch and a couple – okay seasons in New York. What has Odell Beckham Jr. really done for you? He is the most overrated receiver in the NFL that I've ever seen. Like I like I I, I don't disagree. I like. think he's overrated as well. Um but I I just say, you know, look, he's a big target. He's got hands. The guy can can stay with, you know, anybody speed wise. I mean he's 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 a pretty quick wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I don't know. Like I, I'd like to see. It, it's something. It's it's better than what you got, right? I mean, OBJ is better than Kenny Stills, right? Uh, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like what Drew said last night. That that's kind of comparing ad, apples to oranges, as you can compare apples to oranges. Now, I think. Uh, so let me revert back to what you said here, real quick. You said that Odell or the Cleveland Browns are not in love with Odell Beckham. Jr. and maybe Odell Beckham Jr. isn't in, in love with uh, the Cleveland Browns either. But on the flip yep. side of that coin, Jarvis Landry is still hurt. If I'm not mistaken, I th I think he got put on the I Ike on the IR. I'd I'd have to check that. But he 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 he's he's been out the last two weeks. So out of out of necessity, the Cleveland Browns need Odell Beckham Jr. on the field. But they're not using him. Well, but they are using him as a decoy. And when Jarvis Landry comes 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 back that will mean who do you guard then right maybe because odell odell beckham jr still has that name notoriety where you have to guard him with you know a good cornerback like you He's can't got put a line five on him, targets right? in two weeks but but still that five targets maybe that's because Jar jarvis Look, landry is out and they're double teaming him. i mean like you i haven't watched what the odell film beckham jr was prior to this right so he's right. he's been in the league this is his eighth year in the league He's had two seasons where he's been hurt, so he's missed some time. So I'm going to take those two seasons out of it. So he had 621 yards receiving in those six, in those two seasons where he got hurt. So take those out of it. Yeah. The five seasons that he wasn't hurt, he's got 6,332 receiving yards in those five seasons. So it's not bad. God. <laughs> it's pretty damn good. Right. I mean, that's that's an average of, of, of a little over a thousand yards a season. So you're saying that he is good? I'm saying if he stays healthy, if he stays healthy and he's in the right mindset and he develops a chemistry with you, he can return to that form. I don't. He's not a top ten wide receiver, even with those numbers. He's not a top ten wide receiver. He's not DeAndre Hopkins. He's not Julio Jones in his prime. He's not Megatron. He's not those guys. But he's a good weapon. And if the Saints could go out and and make a play for a guy who's only getting five targets from his team and make him the primary receiver on your team, you're going to make him extremely happy. And when he's extremely happy, he's shown that he can perform. He can't perform, and he, and he also can propose really well too. So. Uh, he has I, that no, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I get it. Like I get the hesitation on OBJ. Yeah. I really do. I understand it, especially with the injury bug. But it, he'd be worth a chance because he's better than what you have, with the exception of Callaway, because Callaway and and um, Jameis have a chemistry together. Right. He's better than what you have. So Combs, you have been adamant of saying that Winston is a top ten quarterback all off season yeah. all all previous season before that you have pumped the brakes a little bit but is winston still I, a top 10 quarterback in your eyes yeah he's still he's still got the capability to be a top 10 quarterback is he a top 10 quarterback right now i, I i'd venture to almost say yes i mean i 
you look at what this guy has done in the what five games now that they've played, okay, mm-hmm. and what he's done has o- is is only in five games so for twelve touchdowns and only throw three interceptions. He's only thrown for eight hundred and ninety two yards though. That's where I I've got room to pause, but I I think that that's a system thing. They haven't allowed him to open it up. But the twelve touchdowns to three interceptions, there's nothing wrong there. He's uh, making good reads. Now they're keeping him short. They're not letting him air it out. So that might be helping that along a little bit. And that might be the recipe to success. But they've they've got to allow him to be him. They've got to roll him out more. They've got to allow him to air it out a little bit. And I think he'll be fine. Well, I mean, do you really want him to allow him to be him more per se? Yes. As I, like I use air quotes there. Because the Saints are second in the South right now at a 3-2 and two Brag, brag. I mean, they're obviously winning games and they're performing, doing what they're doing. So why, why switch it up and you know maybe make Winston a turnover machine again? Because let's take the the record and, and being second in the division out of it, right? Okay. You lose twenty six to seven to your the team leading your division, the Carolina Panthers. You lose twenty six to seven to them. Because you don't air it out, because you're just throwing the ball short, because they've got a decent defense. Or because the Carolina then, Panthers are that good. Then you go in and you air it out a little bit, and you beat the hell out of the Patriots in New England. It was a hell of a win. Yeah. Then you come back and you lose to the Giants 27-21. Like that is a defense you, if you're starting to open it up more, you're going to put points on a board. If you let Jameis Winston take over that game, they win that game. And now instead of 3-2, and two, you're sitting at 4-1. and one. And you're leading the division. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I see your point, but it's a double ed- double edged sword. I think, like, why fix what's not broken? You know, what I'm saying, yes, they well, lost a game that they like could have won, but it's not like you're running a juggernaut team though with with what you're doing. I mean, you're running a very beatable offense with what you're doing. At this point, what you got to do, your game plan at this point is to stop Alvin Kamara. Because you're not going to beat me deep because you won't go deep with Jameis Winston. Yeah, but can you stop Alvin Kamara? Yeah, I mean you can contain him. It's not like I mean Alvin Kamara hasn't really you can contain him, but you can't ex- exploded him. just yet. I mean Alvin Kamara hasn't had you know a a MVP type season. I mean the guy's only got 368 yards this season. Yeah, but season is still young and only time will tell if the explosion happens right so speaking I mean, of explosions here the Denver Broncos came exploding out of the gate combs they were 3 and 0 they were uh they were a 1 minute wonder there but now they have dropped 3 to 2 on the season losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers here on Sunday week 5 NFL action combs were the Denver Broncos the worst 3 and 0 team that we have ever seen no, I mean I'm not gonna go there. Uh, they're, you know, first of all they lost their starting quarterback, so I mean that's a huge blow, and especially when Drew Locke is your backup, that's a, it's a huge blow. <laughs> um, I I'm not gonna say they were the worst three and team ever. I think that the Bears were a pretty bad three and team that we saw last year. Uh, there's been other three and teams that we've seen. Steelers. Um, hell, I don't even think they're the the yeah, the Steelers. I don't think they're the worst 3-0 and team that there was this year. Um, I think that that might actually be Carolina. So, you know, they, they've got a tough – and I knew this was a tough stretch. I said this was going to be a tough stretch, and this was going to be the telltale. They needed to go 3-3 three and three in this stretch to prove to me that, that they were a for real team and that they weren't just all smoke and mirrors. I didn't believe in them before this little stretch, and they're not doing much to prove me wrong in this little stretch. They've got the Raiders this week, a very winnable game a game that they should win, but they're also going to get a very angry Raiders team that's lost two in a row. And then they get the Browns. That's going to be a tough game. And then you got the the Washington, not Redskins anymore, the Dallas Cowboys and, and, and the Philadelphia Eagles before you get the Chargers and Chiefs. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's just not looking good for the Denver Broncos. They need to get, te- if they get Teddy Bridgewater back, you might get a more accurate read. Well, but right now without Teddy Bridgewater, it's it's tough. Teddy Bridgewater is back. He he did play last week versus the versus the Steelers, and he actually led a 
you know, some last second drives to pull him closer. Did uh, he play in this game? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he oh, cleared, I didn't even know yeah, that. Oh, yeah, God. He, he, uh, he That's cleared, even worse. <laughs> he he, he uh, cleared concussion protocol, like, Wednesday, I think, of, 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 like, of, of like, last week. But oh, when, you, when you look at the Denver <laughs> Broncos here, they are a really good team at home. But when they travel, they are meh, right? They're yeah. they're they're like the Kansas City Chiefs defense. They forget to show up for three quarters of the season, and then the last quarter, by the bing, by the boom, they're wow, where where this Broncos team come from, right? But also on the flip side of that coin, the Denver Broncos defense is kind of injured. Chubb is out again, uh, which you know he. I, 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 I don't think I've ever seen Von Miller and Chubb on the same field at the same time for the for the for, for, for the Denver Broncos ever. Uh, so yeah. uh, I mean, if That's they can tough. get their if they can get their defense right, they will be fine moving forward. Just because the Kansas City Chiefs are struggling yeah. right now, and you know there are three wild card teams, and they could all possibly make it out of the AFC West uh, just because you know the AFC is so loaded and they beat each other down. Game after game, you know, after I, game. I'm sorry, Liz. I tried giving them the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. I didn't know Bridgewater played this weekend. Now I feel like that that meme from The Office, where I'm just like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, at least she, at least she gave us some awesome BC merch that we will be giving away tomorrow here on the Man Hour YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour. So if you guys are just tuning in, we will be giving away some BC merch tomorrow. So be sure to tune in as we do need to promote that highly, highly much. We do have Shot Top come um, we got up here at an hour number two of Man Hour. So here in about 15 minutes, we'll be opening up to, to some Shop Talk. So I have some questions that are pinned in the comments that I'm going to to, 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 to like ask here, Combs. But speaking of the Steelers and Broncos game, still on the flip side of that coin, the Pittsburgh Steelers do improve to two and three on the season. Ben Ben Roethlisberger kind of looked not so old this this game. <laughs> Are they finding their groove? Because Najee Harris rushed for you know twenty five to twenty six times for one hundred and thirty yards. So are they finding their their groove? No, uh, they're about to lose to Geno Smith and the Seahawks hmm. on Sunday night. Then they're going to lose to the Browns. Then they're going to lose to the Bears. They'll probably beat the Lions because the Lions are terrible. Then Curse they'll lose those to the Lions. Chargers, Bengals, Ravens, Vikings, Titans, Chiefs, Browns, Ravens. I don't think they'll win another game other than against the Lions. Yeah. I just I, I don't I don't see it. And Juju's probably out for the rest of the season as well. So that so that that hurts their wide receiver depth depth as well. And Claypool is Claypool like one of the most like diva wide receivers ever in the NFL right now too? Man, I, I cannot stand him for whatever reason. Like I know he is a Notre Dame guy and you're a fan of him, but his TikTok pisses me off. Let's just be honest about that. <laughs> like, he, he's like he's he's, he's probably done done for the season now. Juju, yeah, yeah, yeah. Juju is, but Claypool, he's still there. And I mean, I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers they need to run the ball eighty percent of the time. Is Claypool, anything? Pro like that's kind of what I was asking. Like, who else do do they have? Because like, if you if you look at the roster here, as I'm pulling it, as I'm pulling it up, duh, 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 my internet's slow because everybody's watching um, murder mysteries. Uh, so if I ever end up dead, you guys know why because my wife knows how to uh, do that. But um, yeah, they have Eric Ebron is the only <laughs> only uh, uh, receiver that I know, and he's a freaking tight end. James Washington is out. Chase Claypool, Devontae Johnson. Ray Ray McLeod, Cody White, and Juju is is like is out. So really? if there's if there's ever of a time for wide receivers to like find work, uh, like I like I like I know a fifth fifth fifty fifty five year old Terrell Terrell Owens was was looking for for some work, so he could uh you know play for the Steelers. Calvin Johnson probably still has a little left in the tank, even though he's he's been retired for seven years. He can go play for them. Uh, it just I don't know. I mean the Steelers, Steelers suck. Sorry, yeah, they're yeah. they're not good, um, and I didn't think they were going to be good. I only had them at five wins this season. Yeah, uh, I don't even know if they're going to get to that. I look, they're 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 going to probably win a couple of games they shouldn't win. Uh, they might beat the Seahawks because Geno Smith is is their quarterback this week. 
Um, you know, they it might be home. Baltimore once because it's a rivalry game. Um, you know, they could possibly, if the Bengal, if they force the Bengals to kick field goals and miss them all day long, then you know they could beat the Bengals. But not a far fetched idea. It's not. It's not going to be. A, <laughs> it's not going to be a, a ton of victories coming for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's for sure. Well, they also play the Minnesota Vikings. They they like to miss field goals as well. So. I mean, that's true. If if in theory you can with that, championship... and they'll be losing to the Lions until about a minute to go. Yeah, and then what they're going to do is they're going to kick a ninety-five yard field goal, <laughs> and they're going to cause Dan Campbell to cry again in his press oh, conference. Oh man, what so... a freaking! Yeah, I, I like I seriously almost turned into when I'm watching that. I almost turned into uh, what's his face that uh, the the act I can't think. Of. Tom Hanks, are you crying? There's no crying, crying, in crying in football. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the, like, I was, I was like, what am I watching oh, right now? Like, they tried so hard. The, dude, shut up. Coach your team. Don't you try stop hard every bringing, day? God, stop, stop so trying to bring man. lions to practice and actually learn football. I mean, maybe, he, maybe that'll help. Oh, come on, man. Unbelievable. Screw lions those terrible. lions. Come on. They have crushed my heart the last two seasons. I, <laughs> Cry all you want, my man. You are ridiculous. But Combs, we are up against the next break, guys. We're going to open up to Shop Talk. I see some questions that I have queued up. I want to ask those during Shop Talk. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, guys. If you got any questions for us, head over to youtube.com forward slash man hour. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and hit the like by eye button. And then you can ask a question. But before that, uh, I might consider it, but I don't know. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> we'll be right back. That's something. I got to find the button. There it is. Rookie. Nation brought to you by Brooks Roofing and Siding. Contact them at 812-868-7663 or online at brooksroofingin.com. Brooks Roofing and Siding, protection you need when nature strikes. And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Brandon Combs and I head over to manhourradio.com and check out the new merch that we just dropped. The Beastie merch is live. The Brandon Combs signature series will be up and operational by the end of the week. That's guaranteed that Buck Nasty has given you. But tomorrow, guys, we'll be giving away some Beastie merch right here on Man Hour. So youtube.com forward slash Man Hour, 8 p.m. East Coast time. October 12th, 2021. That is a Tuesday. Tune in as we will be giving away some Beastie merch. Speaking of Beastie, let's welcome him back on to the show, Beastie. Uh, 
So, uh, isn't it funny how sometimes nicknames just like stick, and now and now all of a sudden you're Beastie Combs at a BC, and it just I don't know, just kind of crazy. Hey, you know, it? I'll take it. There's look, man. I I've been divorced twice. Yeah. So I've had much much worse nicknames <laughs> than Beastie. I'll tell you. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things. I'll take Beastie. That's 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 all right. I mean, look, there's some good things like what the Beastie Boys. Yeah. That, I mean, that was a good name out of out of Beastie. Yeah. Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Oh. I mean, hey, he got the girl at the end, right? Yeah, and you got the girl hey. now, so it just rolls, rolls are reversed. Yeah, but you're still so, ugly. I mean, oh yeah, that, <laughs> okay, dude, okay. that name fits, man. <laughs> Beast, <Yeah>. Beastie fits. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, uh, I ain't scared. But yeah, so so guys, Beastie merch is live at you at manourradio.com. Go ahead and click on the merchandise page, and I will be you know tweaking the website there. So guys, be sure to tune in and. Give me some feedback of how you like the merch section. Also, guys, Project XX is taking big steps, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, so if you guys want to be a part of Project XX, become be, be sure you become a member right here at YouTube.com forward slash man hour. Simply click on that join button and a little 99 cents a month, you, you can become a member. So Project XX is coming hopefully very, very soon. We'll get more details hopefully by the end of the week. And as they start to sprinkle in, if you are a member, you will find out what is happening. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So definitely become a member. So Combs, it is time for Shop Talk. And I do have a couple questions that are highlighted here that I want to ask. So Drew asked, right. so so this was when we were talking about Winston and the Saints, about him going 15 for 30 uh, last week here in Week 5 NFL action. Uh, Drew asked, were those missed passes because of his errant throws or receiver errors? I did not watch the game myself. Like I have not had a chance to break down that film yet. Uh, but usually when a receiver drops the ball, you know, they're a drop category, right? And I'm looking yeah. at the stats from that game, and there's only three drops in that game. So uh there's there there's there's at least, you know, seventeen incompletion passes. Or sorry, thirteen in, in, like in, in com completions that were just bad throws. Right, right. So, and that's, I mean, look, it, it's it's one of those where you just, you know, it, sometimes too. I mean, you gotta understand, like they they probably don't have the best route running wide receivers right now. Oh, hands down, they don't. And, you know, are are you running bad routes? Uh, you know, was he rushed on some of these passes where some of them deflected at the line? Where you know, I've got to look at the hurries. I've got to look at, you know, I didn't really watch the game. So I don't really know, you know, how he really played. The numbers look good, though. I mean, four touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, that's those are good numbers. So, yeah, he didn't have 15 intercepts, interceptions or three back to back to back. So, I mean, that's that's yeah. all positive in that aspect. But usually on Wednesdays is is like when I break down the film because I got the NFL package where I can like replay the games in like half hour. So yeah. I get so Wednesdays are usually my slower days. So I. I get a lot of caught up film on that. And then Javi comes in and lie. I can say Casey will not, or sorry, Casey will be just fine. They may not lose a game now. I mean, that's, I, that that's wouldn't surprise me. Goals, right. That's a, yeah. I mean, I, I did have him going. I had it going a little bit differently. I had him going 0 and three and then going off on a, on a tangent, but it, it wouldn't surprise me. And it, you know, we even talked about it after you went off on your little rant. We talked about it during the break. Yeah. I, and I said the same thing. It wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden I trust that offense enough to where it would not surprise me to see them rattle off, you know, four or twelve straight wins and, and finish the season at fourteen and three. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. They're that damn good. That offense is that damn good. Patrick right. Mahomes is that damn good. And at some point, that defense will wake up and realize that they're pretty damn good too. So something will give. Something's got to give. And we'll see what it is. I, you know, it's it's going to be one of two things: either they're going to come back and wake up, or they're going to struggle all season long, and they're going to end up with a first round exit. And there's going to be some changes in Kansas City. I mean, the 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 only changes that might happen is Eric Bieniemy might become a USC head coach, and that's about it. But uh, Drew says that Kansas City will make the playoffs. So if you guys do not know, we are running a poll over here at YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour. And the question is, will Kansas City Chiefs make the playoffs? And uh, Drew says they will make the playoffs, but they may not make it past the first round. So How weird would that be? Yeah. I mean, back-to-back -back Super Bowls. The Chiefs yeah. not in the playoffs? 
Yeah, especially after back-to-back Super Bowls. Yes. To not even make the playoffs. So three AFC championship chip chip games, back-to-back play, play, playoffs. So if the playoffs were to start right now, obviously it's still week week five. Long way to go, right? But if the playoffs were to start right now in the AFC, Combs, the number one seed would be the Los Angeles Chargers. Coming in at number two would be the Buffalo Bills. Three would be the Ravens. Four would be the Titans. Five would be the Cincinnati Bengals. Six would be the Raiders. And seven would be the Denver Broncos. So we would, the Kansas City Chiefs would be out of, out of the playoffs right now. Granted, yes, I, like I know they're two and three and they're tied for like, a, for, for like 11th. But right now, you know, I mean, hindsight's 20 to 20. I mean, they're out of the playoffs. And man, look at these playoffs. It, that would be a really, really weird playoff, Combs. Let, let's just be honest. Broncos, Raiders, Bengals, Titans, Ravens, Bills, Chargers. <laughs> what? <laughs> God. Wow. That would be, yeah. That would, that would uh, and then the, the Broncos NFC Broncos would be in yeah. the playoffs, huh? They'd back in at the seventh seed? Yeah, so the Broncos would play the Bills, Raiders would play the Ravens, Bengals would play the, play the Titans. The Bengals, the Cincinnati Bengals would be in the playoffs. What seed would they be? Number five, right, right now. Wow. Yeah, absolutely wow. crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't wrap my head around that. What I really can't wrap my head around is the Chicago Bears would would, would be the sixth seed in the NFC. Really? Yeah. What who, who? What are the seeds in the NFC? So on the NFC side, if the playoffs were to start today, which obviously they don't, Arizona Cardinals would be one, Dallas Cowboys would be two, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be three, Packers four, Rams five, all four and one, by the way. And then the Bears and Carolina Panthers coming at six and seven. Wow. So you'd have a Panthers Cowboys matchup, Bears, Bucks, and Rams Packers matchup. All really, really good games, like I might add. Bears, Bucks, huh? Yeah. You think maybe Tom Brady forgets it's fourth down again? He, he definitely could. Any chance could. of that happening? I mean, he definitely could. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, uh, back to the chat here on Chop Talk, guys. So, if you guys got any questions, feel free to ask them here at YouTube.com forward slash man hour. Or if you're watching us on Facebook, I like as well, Facebook.com forward slash man hour sports talk. Go ahead and ask away. Uh, I think I already read that. Javi says, Casey will be just fine. May not lose a game now. Uh, I think we just said that. Uh, and then he says, uh, but they will be better now. They will win and maybe not lose a game. He said that twice. Okay. Uh, he is really adamant that Kansas City will not lose a game for the rest of the year. Um, and then Kansas City knows how, knows what they have to play to. Casey knows how that they have to play to best game given Sunday because every team is aiming for that. So basically he says they have to step up every game because yeah, you should know what that means. I mean, that's, that's straight Buccaneers. Yeah, that's straight Buccaneers. Buccaneers merch coming soon as you guys, soon as you tell me how to play, spell it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously we've got it. Obviously, obviously guys, Kansas city has a target on their back. 100%. That's why they lost to the bills. That's why they, the Browns took them, you know, to the last play uh, of the game. That's why the chargers whooped that ass. I mean, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking of the Buccaneers shirt. We can make it. So it'd be, there'll be two B's and three U's. And then the, the, the CK and the, the I N E S E Buccaneers like your stuff. <laughs> Not yeah, Perfect. Mock it up right now, Combs. Uh, I'm so doing it. I'm mock it up right now, we'll, and we'll launch it next week, next next oh next Monday. God. So I'm Javi says, I love you. Yeah, it's all love, brother. Uh, you guys can all, I mean, we've all been there. Uh, yeah. da, 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 da. Javi says he got paid last night. The White Sox, baby, damn, can't lose every bet. Yeah, Javi, I mean, you're bound to win one. I mean, one out of 100 yeah. isn't, like, isn't bad. Well, uh, when you make a good bet, it it, yeah. it you know, it oh. wasn't looking like I, I bet I bet after that that second inning where they were down five to one, you were like, "Are you freaking kidding me right now?" <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> so here is a good question from Drew. This is what Shop Talk is all about, guys. So if you guys want a textbook question for Shop Talk, this is it. Take notes right here. Drew asks, "My question is about the Arizona Cardinals versus the Chargers. Who would win that game?" I'm going Arizona. I think Arizona is the best team in football. And, like, I think that that Arizona defense would find a way to slow down the Chargers offense just enough that, I mean, it would be probably a 
I'd say 35-27 type game. So you're picking 35-27 Arizona Cardinals over the Chargers if they were to play yeah. like right now, right? Yes, sir. Let me tell you the truth here, Combs. Arizona Cardinals, the most overrated 5-0 and team in yeah, all okay. of NFL. They are not that good, Combs. Just okay. face it. They are still going to finish 9-8. Yeah. and eight. They're, they're, they're only going to win four more games. Drew is going to be sitting here crying, but then he'll flip over the TV and like, oh, the Bills are on. Oh, oh, wait, the Dolphins are on. Oh, oh, okay, wait, the Lions. So, it, 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 the Arizona so Cardinals will get their ass wolfed by the Chargers, hands down. Let's put this in perspective, okay? Okay. We said the NFC West was the best division in football, okay? Your words, not mine. Okay. So, yes. yeah, I can, that's right. You, you you had the Detroit Lions being 11-5. So, <laughs> let's take that into account. I, first I, I actually said the AFC West was going to be the best division, but the, Second the of NFC all, West was strong. Second. Then we were talking about how the Rams might be two weeks ago, three weeks ago. We were talking about the Rams might be the best defense in football. They might be the best team in football. Yeah. And Arizona went out and put a hurting on them in L.A. 37-20. to 20, Beat them by 17 points. Flex on those mofos. Then... They go out against San Francisco 49ers, also in the NFC West. Yeah. Beat them 17 to 10. Without Jimmy G. Without Jimmy G. I'll give them that. With without Jimmy G, they beat them 17 to 10. They also beat the Titans 38 to 13. Shit team. You still have to short. Sure, I wouldn't say a shit team, but middle of the road. I'll give you middle Chiefs of the road. Chiefs are better than Titans, and the Titans and the Chiefs suck right now. Chiefs. Right now, the Titans are better than the Chiefs the way they're playing right now. Okay. The Vikings and the Jaguars, I'll give you those, are soft wins. Yeah. But they're 5-0. and oh. You are right. You are In the best division right. in football, they're 5-0. and oh. Well, they've only played they're, two, they're, two they're division not, games. They're so. not, they're not <laughs> smoking mirrors. They got the Browns in Cleveland this Loss. Sunday. It's going to be a good game. It is going to be a great game. It's going to be a good game. This is, this I, if is a they game that lose, I have circled to watch. Yeah. If they lose, I wouldn't be. I, it wouldn't shock me, but I, it'll be a close game. Right. Then they get the Texans. They're going to murder the Texans. No loss. Davis Mills steps up and did, and they win again. This will be their second win. Okay. Carry on. Then they get the smoke and screen Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Lambo West, as they call it. That's a loss. So three losses in a row. Then they get the Niners again. Oh, that that'd be a good game because it's it's at it's at Candlelight or it's at Levi Stadium. Then Would, Panthers. Do you Seahawks, think Jimmy G Bears. will be back for for that game? Probably. I think I if think Jimmy, Jimmy G, G plays and um uh, George Kittle is back, the 49ers win that game. But if not, they lose. Mm, maybe. I. I don't know. I look. I mean, you're talking about a team. That is averaging thirty points a game, for now. They're they're not they're they're only giving up. Uh, I believe I'd have to do the math here. I'm trying to do it in my head real quick. Um, but I I think they're giving up. It looks like about twenty to twenty two points a game is what they're giving up. But they're scoring thirty. Yeah, I mean that one game versus the Vikings really kind of skewed their uh, points per game. Yeah, right? I mean yeah. other than other than the Vikings, take the Viking games out of it. They gave up thirteen, nineteen, yeah. twenty, and ten. So 17 points a game, basically. Yeah. So I just I don't I don't understand where you feel there there's smoke and mirrors there. They're good on offense. I'm not they're saying that they're smoke and, they're good and mirrors. I'm saying that they're overrated. I, I like I mean, they're, because wow. people people are saying Super Bowl Super Bowl Super Bowl. I still take the Rams over them in the Super Bowl. I still take the Cowboys over them. The, in the, the same Super Bowl. Rams that they walked into their house. Yeah. Kissed their mom on the cheek. Yep. Those, and said, what's up? Those. Call those, me daddy those and beat them 37 to 20 in their own house. Yep. Those same Rams. I also would take the Bucks over them. Hell, I would take the uh, um, the Seahawks over them. Cheers. Go ahead. Yeah. And I will. Go and ahead. I'll win. I mean, my bets are like no, Javier bets. So. Yeah. I mean, you can keep betting on like Javier bets. I'll take <laughs> all your money. But, but realistically, though, Combs, looking at their schedule moving forward, I mean, obviously the Texans is probably going to be be a win. I feel that the Panthers are kind of like a toss up. The Lions is going to be a win. The Colts. I think they're going to destroy the Packers. You think they're going to destroy the the, the, the Packers? Yeah. The, the Packers defense is so bad right now. They can't stop the run. They they're just they're that's a they're, Thanksgiving I, night game, isn't it? 
No, no, that's on October twenty eighth. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm they're sorry. going to. They're going Thursday night to game. Just. I mean, just wallop the Green Bay Packers. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, I mean, I, I don't I mean. It it depends what Green Bay Packers show up. Is the, the is it is it the Green Bay Packers from first half versus the Detroit Lions or the second half of the Detroit Lions game? If it's James second, Connor is going to run for 160 yards in that game. Number first of all, I hate running backs with the number six now or seven or go back to the <laughs> old number scheme. It's pissing me off. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Javier Why do you says care what number they're wearing. Because it's stupid. Like I hate number seven. Like that's that's that, that's a defensive end. Yes, I know Diggs <laughs> is killing it. And then their number one receivers and number two running backs. It's just it's so dumb. But Javier says the Char- Chargers will win. Um, I mean, I think it would be a great game. Honestly, it, like they could probably slug it out like the Chiefs and uh, Rams did. What twenty eighteen. I, yeah, I'm taking the Cardinals. I just I think the Cardinals are their best team in football. I think it would be a good game. I do. I mean, that that Chargers defense is the real deal. They can slow you down. But that Cardinals defense is just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, you got Chandler Jones on one end, J.J. Watt on the other end. It, they are just – they are so good. And they're fast. They get to the ball. I mean, it's just – I I'm, I mean – I Javi- think they would give Justin Herbert fits. Javier uh, just said that Tua is like Jimmy G, a good player but fragile as hell. 100% correct on that one. As far as the fragile part. I don't know. No. Oh. I mean, I mean, as far as the fragile part, yes. As a player part, Tua. Who, who did he compare? Tua and Jimmy G. Man. It's kind of a good comparison. Injury wise, injury wise, yes. Player wise, Quarter, would... quarterback wise, I'll take Jimmy G any day of the week over Tua. Yeah, but so if we have to compare Tua to somebody actively in the NFL, who is going to be probably Kirk Cousins, right? Most really over overrated and, and underperforming, right? Uh, no, I, I look. Kirk Cousins puts up good numbers. Kirk On Cousins non prime time is... games. <laughs> Yeah, but he doesn't play very many primetime games. True. I mean, Kirk Cousins is a winning quarterback in this league. Kirk Cousins puts up points with the Minnesota Vikings. I. So who would you compare Tua to then? Tua? Davis Mills? No, I... <laughs> Lamar yeah, Jackson Davis trash? Mills. If I had to put a comparison on Tua... God. That's a tough one. I, I think... <laughs> Uh, probably Ryan Tannehill. Really? Yeah. And I think Ryan Tannehill is a quarterback that gets better every year, much like uh, – um, uh, I mean, think about it. Ever, ever since he has escaped that Adam Gaze trap hole, that and, trip, that Bermuda Triangle. He didn't escape an Adam, Ga- an, an Adam Gaze trap hole because he was in Miami. Yeah. I mean, he. But, this is what his third year as a starter in Tennessee. Yeah, but – yeah. But he's got King Henry running the ball. That's what he didn't have in Miami. He's got he's got a running back that will carry the ball forty times, and and run for two hundred yards. That's that's what they do with King Henry. They don't pass. They don't put the ball in Ryan Tannehill's hands. Well, and should. when they do have to put the ball in Ryan Tannehill's hands, they lose the game. He has a hot wife though, and his wife's so wife so hot. Yeah, she is pretty hot. I, mean, I would, I would probably pay to. No, I'm, I'm talking no you wouldn't. No, I, like I wouldn't. I only got ten. You, you, Ten bucks. You, you look at like, you, 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 it's been five seconds since you made that statement, and you're already divorced. Yeah, a hundred percent. Actually, I just took an axe <laughs> from from my back as death to his part, and she just killed me. No, oh, the, <laughs> the door blows off the garage. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> no, uh, Drew says, "Buck, did you take a hit of acid before the show?" Um, actually, ecstasy. Um, I I do a line of ecstasy before every every, every show to make sure you guys bring the best quality content as I can. It also en- enhances my stutter. That actually so explains a lot. Makes it a lot more like, you know, uh, you know, so. Yeah. You know, okay. so. <laughs> but, but no, I've, I've never done drugs before. Fun fact about me. So. Hmm. Yeah. 
and watch this commercial and tell me that. I'll be right back. You probably shouldn't hang out with me, though. Tell me why you haven't hit the like button yet. Tell me why you haven't subscribed yet. Tell me why you aren't commenting in the comments. All we want you to do is become a part of Man Hour Nation. Hit that like button, please. Thank you. Adios. What's up, Man Hour Nation? Coming up here next on the Man Hour NFL Power Rankings with Graham Wallace. At Bus Wallace on the old Twitter machine. Check him out. But right now, guys, hit that like button. Share this with a couple friends. And be sure to comment. It helps the channel more than you ever know. We appreciate everything you guys do for us here in the comments at youtube.com forward slash Man Hour. Man Hour Nation, rise up. Damn, man, let me buy some money. Now, Philly, what do you need money for now? I've been losing all my money on the pursuit of fantasy football, yo. I just need like 10 more dollars on my machine. Again, I told you to stop playing that site. You simply go to pickemores.com. Link in the description. And you get to play for free. So you telling me? I can play for free? That means zero, 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 and will some man Benjamins, yo? I listen. Yeah. Give me some of that free dough, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Head over to pickamores.com and pick your games for free and win real money. Link in the description. Check it out. Hey, glad you're there. New merch. Check it out. Manourradio.com. Hey, look, a hot dog. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buck has long. Brandon BC Combs. BC Merch has dropped at Manourradio.com. Be sure to check it out. And I do love my wife very, very much. So, Javier, your wish is my command. Cindy, I love you, baby. So, with that being said, <laughs> Javier says, don't be like me. Like, Javier, don't be like me. Because if you knew exactly what I did on the side sidelines, you would be like, what is this wrong with this guy? But nonetheless, guys, here at Man Hour, we do have a script that we go by kind of roughly. But Combs, yeah. there's some breaking news that has kind of surfaced here in the last five, ten minutes here on the Man Hour at YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour on the live show here, 915 East Coast time. But what has officially happened, Combs? Reports have it that John Gruden has informed his staff that he plans to step down as the Raiders head coach amidst the Demoris Smith racial scandal. So, guys, if you are unaware of what is going on with John Gruden here, this is just a rough outline here. So, an outline is from my English days back. You know, I can speak English and actually just not Buccaneers. But with that being said, uh, basically what happened in 2011, the NFL Players Association was going to hold out and all that good jazz. And John Gruden was even working for the NFL. I believe he was working for ESPN. I, like at the time he was doing Monday night. He was football and doing the, uh, yep. doing the uh, John Gruden quarterback camp. And he basically said that the players uh, association representative had big lips. That's basically what it come down, yeah. down to. Uh, so like Combs said, I, I'm going to take your words when you say it for a, for a female, it is sexy. But when you say it to a, to a black man, apparently that's racist. Uh, so yeah, John, it, go ahead. I, I don't get it, man. I don't look, look, I know we don't like getting into some of these topics sometimes. And I know it, that this stuff it. is, is, is freaking, you know, people get mad about it. People want to talk about it. They get mad because you're on one side instead of on their side. This is stupid facts. This is stupid because we say it about Demoris Smith or because John Gruden said it about Demoris Smith. It's it's racist. Ten years ago, we I say add. it all the time about Angelina Jolie, right? Yeah, we say like I, dude. How many white people do you know that get lip injections? Tons. A lot of they DSL got big lips, lips, right? DSL they got lips. big lips. <laughs> like what the like what the 
Like, yeah. why? Why does everything have to turn into a racial comment? It's not a racial comment. He made a... Look, Demore Smith does have big clips. Demore Smith is dumb Moore Smith. He's an idiot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So why? Like, why do they have to... Like, why is is everything... The, the cancel culture kills me. Why do they have to turn everything into... Oh, well, he's... First of all, it was nine years ago. No, no, ten years ago. 2011. Ten years ago, ten years ago yeah. It's, it's ten years ago. He wasn't even the head coach. No. So he said something 10 years ago, and we want to bring it up now. Why do we care what he said 10 years ago? Stop. Well, so, I mean, first things first. I mean, it's, it, it is absolutely – so basically I feel what happened is Morris said, John Gruden, pay me some money because, like, I, I know you're making a $100 million to coach the Las Vegas Raiders right now. Give me about 20, 20 million of that and that – Email will go, will go, will go away. Basically, what happened? John Gruden said, "You know what? Screw you!" And his Chucky Mo was like, "No, no, 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 I'm not paying you nothing, right?" And bada bing, bada boom. Basically, somebody wants John Gruden's job, so the email surfaces, and that's what happens. I mean, that's what it comes down to, Combs. It's just, it's so stupid. Like I, I like, it's not like I don't even understand. Like, is that really a thing? Like, is that a stereotype uh, uh, for for black people? Is that they all have big lips? Because that's that's not true. I mean, I know, some I know, gotten... like I, I I do know some some celebrities. Like, you look at um at uh, God Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey's got some big lips. Yeah, he does. But then, but but look at Joan Rivers. She got some big lips too. But so what? Who cares? If you got big lips, you got big lips. If you got big ears, you got big ears. If you got a big dingling, you become a porn star. Yeah. Uh, it just, uh, Drew like, says, like, yes, cares? it is a stereotype. How is it a stereotype? Why? I, I don't, I don't why know. Is that a, why is that a thing? I don't. Oh, okay. I, I so would have never in a million years, if you would have said, name me a race with big lips. All of them? <laughs> <laughs> what do uh, you mean? Kim Kardashian, right? No. Yes. Uh, but, but, I mean. I mean, you can say that about. Does flat she count as white too. or black? By the way, I don't know what she is. Okay. I mean, Just I think both of her thought. parents are white, but I mean, she's she's so fake okay. that she's like turning black. I don't know what it is. To be honest with you, uh, <laughs> yeah. She's, but uh, she's something. Javier says my ex wife got big lips, and I love her lips. Yeah, I mean that's what big lips are all about. Did he just say his ex wife has big lips and he loves her lips? Yeah. I hope you don't have a girlfriend right now, Javier. Yeah. I, or a wife. I hope you didn't. Now you you gonna either. be you you and Buck gonna be able to share a room tonight. Hey, you know what, Javier? Come on up, man. There's 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 plenty of room at, like in the garage back back here. But uh, this I just is don't get it, man. This is just what irritates me about the society that we live in, Combs. To be honest, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> with you. Sorry, I saw a comment that I chat ch- ch- cracked cracked me up a little bit. Javier or Drew says. North or South, big big lips. Uh, so uh, we are going. We're going on the wrong side of the chat here, real quick. Here, uh, way to go, Drew and Javier again. Do you oh, God. do you remember that about like about a month ago when they had gotten like dog poop or whatever it was, man? Like it was. Yeah, I was like, good. I, like I just looked at. Him, I'm like, what is going on? I just, I just I just turned this turn the turn the chat chat off. But this, do you remember the uh, the uh, the Kavanaugh thing a couple years ago? When yeah. Trump like made him a Supreme Court justice or something to to that effect, and this girl yeah. brought something up that happened in high school, completely made up, right? Uh, why shouldn't there be some type of statute of limitation, like like hey, like you can't go back five, well, five, not fifteen only that, years? But I mean, look, you got, I mean, they've got stuff where, I mean, I I can't remember if it was an NFL player or an NBA player. Who you know was like twenty six or twenty seven in the league? They brought up a tweet from when he was sixteen. Oh, that was uh, that was, was that, that was Josh Allen too. You're you're a kid, yeah. like you don't know any better. You're 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 stupid. You say stupid stuff. You do stupid stuff when you're young. Hell, it took me till I was like thirty before I grew the hell up yeah. and <laughs> stopped saying stupid stuff and started watching what I was because you just there's. It, it happens. I'm 33 and still say stupid shit. Look, it, if you say something when you're – like, if, if I come out and I say something when I'm, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, 14, 15, 16, whatever the case is, am I really held accountable for something that I said back then? 
Because if so, like I can can tell you right now, like uh, shit, I'm I'm an asshole. Yeah, well, I'm just glad Twitter and Facebook were not around, or social media, or cell phones that had cameras back when I was in high school. Because I would I would oh, be God. in jail. But let's just be flat out honest. Like I would not be yeah. seeing the light of jail whatsoever. And yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> some are like Buck and never grow up. I mean, like like uh, Drew, you are absolutely right. I mean, I still act like I'm a six 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 sixteen year old just because like I enjoy having fun in life. I mean, like if you guys would ever see me like outside of like like everything's a sexual reference, you know, like that's what yeah, she said. But it, it's just I mean, like look, it, it, it's, it's just so dumb. I I it's if you can't accept people for who they are by now, for who they are as a person. And and not worry about their skin color, not worry about this, not worry about that. Then you're you're not a human being. I just like you're just you're just an asshole anyway. So you're gonna be who you are because bad people are just bad people. Like I I don't look and say you know I I look at it all the time. People ask me all the time like I I'm a big baseball guy. If I had one person in the world I could ever interview. And bring back from the dead an interview. It'd be Jackie Robinson. I did a whole thing on it when I was going to school for sports broadcasting. I love Jackie Robinson. I don't love Jackie Robinson because he was black. I love Jackie Robinson because he had the the intestinal fortitude to go against the grain and do things that nobody else could do. And he was a trendsetter. But it's not because he was a black public. My favorite player right now in the league is Javier Baez. Do you think I care that that he comes from Puerto Rico? No. Who cares? Just like I I don't understand the mental makeup. I don't understand the mentality of we don't like somebody be just because of the color of their skin. Because I'll tell you what, I know plenty of people that are of of ethnic descent that I like more way more than people who are white. And it's because of their personality. It's not because of the color of their skin. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't understand the mental makeup. It, it, and it's, to be honest with you, the way I think is more normal than the way of what's going on right now. The way everything has to be a racial issue. The way everything has to be tension. The way everything has to be offensive. It's not. Just stop with that. It, it's just, it's it, it drives me absolutely bonkers. Because it's just, it, it, it really is, man. Social media has taken a hold of society. And if something offends you, man, you break out that camera, you put it all over on blast, you make it go viral, and it's going to become a thing. And it's stupid. Yeah. It's absolutely stupid. We'd rather take a guy like, and I'm going to say it, and I'm probably going to piss some people off right now, but you take a guy like George Floyd, a career criminal, a career drug addict, and we immortalize him. Why? Because somebody was offended about the way a, a a bad cop, a bad person handled the situation. So all of a sudden, we're making statues out of him, but we're tearing down statues of Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Very, very true. And just to reiterate, when the whole George Floyd thing happened— Combs was the first one to say that the cops cops screwed up. So I mean, they're like, yeah, he was mean, an like, asshole. Yeah, I mean, like he he he, 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 he deserves to go to prison. Yeah. So like, I just want to make sure we clear on that. No, I, like, I, look, yeah. I'm I'm yeah. equal. I'm on both sides of the fence. Look, right. if you're if you're a bad person, you're a bad person. I don't care what the color of your skin was. The right. cop was in the wrong. But George Floyd is not somebody to be recognized. There's yeah. no George Floyd Day. There's no, you know, in remembrance. Like, stop. Yeah. Stop. And the weird thing and, about uh, that do, is they do put we a have statue. a Jeffrey Dahmer Day? Can we have a Jeffrey Dahmer Day? I don't know who Jeffrey Dahmer is. Jeffrey Dahmer was the the guy, the serial killer who killed people and eat their parts. But oh. he was gay and he was white, so. Can, can we have can we have a day for him? No, because I mean, he's white. He, I mean, but. He was he was a criminal, and I mean he died in prison. He was murdered in prison by by inmates. Um, it actually, it was a, it was it was an inmate who who was black, so maybe it was a hate crime. And maybe I'm offended by the fact that Jeffrey Dahmer died. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. It's stupid. I don't know. It, it is it is very very stupid, and I I couldn't agree. Let's more get back you. to sports. Let's get back to sports here, Combs, because coming out with Combs is. Coming up later here in about 10 minutes, 
15 minutes on the show. So, Combs, be prepared for that because, you know, I need you to bring back your blood pressure and then bring it back up like, like again so we don't have to call 911 to two tonight. But last night we did touch a little bit on the Browns Chargers Chargers game and we briefly touched on it. But after re rewatching the game today, I saw the final two, three minutes of the like of the game. And the Cleveland Browns, they seem to not have faith in Baker Mayfield to win them the game. They the play calling was very passive at best, kind of 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 like, oh yeah, we're only down by five, whatever, we'll just kind of do do what we do. Combs, do you think the Browns do not trust Baker Mayfield? No, I think they trust him. I I just don't think they feel he has any weapons right now without Jarvis Landry. I don't think that they trust Odell Beckham uh, to get the ball. I don't think that they trust any of their wide receivers to make a big play right now. And that's a problem. I mean, Baker Mayfield's trying to do a lot more with his legs than he's trying to do with his arm. And the play calling hasn't been great the last couple of weeks in Cleveland. They did beat the Vikings, but it was only 14-7. to seven. And, you know, they, they, they still put up points. They put up 42 points. Right. So, you know, I I don't think that it's a, a thing where they don't trust Baker Mayfield. I mean, he did throw the ball 32 times. I think you also have Nick Chubb and and, and uh, Kareem Hunt running the ball, and those are two very dynamic running backs, and they can make some things happen. And that's kind of what their scheme is around. It's a lot like the Tennessee Titans scheme. Let's run the ball, run the ball, and then surprise you with a pass. You know, and so they stuck to their game plan. Look, the Chargers are just a really good team. It's okay to say that they're, but even though they lost, it's okay to say it was just really two really good teams going at it. Right. Yeah. 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 So, like, what you said there, you nailed it right on the head. They have Cream Hunt and Nick Chubb, guys. These these guys alone are starters on any other team of the NFL. They are a one-two punch in Cleveland. And they are and like on the season, they have a little over 800 yards. Nick Chubb is is averaging 104 four yards a game, and Kareem Hunt is averaging 60 yards per game. When you have 160 yards repetitively on the ground over and over and over, why do you need to rely on Baker Mayfield to you know win you ball games per per se? But this is but this is about Sunday night game, Sunday afternoon noon game. Yes, the play calling was very, very conservative, but I don't think it's because they don't have faith in Baker. Combs, I think you nailed it. They don't have faith in Odell Beckham Jr. They, they don't have faith in the tight ends. So they were playing to not to win the game, but not to lose the game either. They were hoping to maybe break a big play here or there to get them into scoring range, and then they maybe would have you know pushed it down the field a little bit more. But... 40, the the problem that I have with the Browns right now is giving up 47 points to the Chargers. Yes, the Chargers are a very very good team. Let's not take take that from what whatsoever. I think I think they're they're the best team in the AFC. But when you give up 47 points with this defense that they have, this is the same defense that Combs that your Chicago Bears gave up nine sacks to, and now they're giving up 47 seven points. That's kind of a concern for me a little bit. Do you do you think maybe? There's a little bit of trouble on the defensive side of the ball. Sorry, I had something ringing in my ear just now. Which team are we talking about? The Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns. Yeah, so um, on the defensive side of the ball, I wouldn't say I would think that anything is wrong. Um, I mean, they've they've they looked pretty good against the Bears a couple weeks ago yeah. when they had nine sacks. Uh, you know, the previous two weeks, yes, they gave up 47 points yesterday, but the previous two weeks prior to that, they had given up 13 total points. So, you know, it's they're You know, yesterday it was just two really good teams going up against each other. They got the Cardinals this week. They're probably going to give up a lot of points there too. Yeah. And well, also on the flip side of that coin, the uh, Browns do have four players out from last week as well. So Cl- Clowney yeah. was out. Greg Newsom was out. Uh, Jeremiah Osa Kam- how you say that guy's name from uh, uh, Notre Dame? That that's your boy, uh, the the oh. linebacker Osa Kamoa. Uh, yeah, I don't want to butcher his name too bad. 
But yeah, so so I mean they definitely had some key <laughs> players out, right? Uh, but on the hindsight, I mean they still lost, but they are still a good team moving forward. Guys, let's go ahead and take a take a quick break. On the other side of the break, we do got coming up with Collins. You want me to pronounce it for you? Go ahead. Owusu Koromoa. Koromoa. I was close, vanilla wafer. But <laughs> uh Javier says mini baker hold up is that stopping because I'm white? commercials. <sighs> yeah. No, that's that's the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers lineman that we were making fun of. Not, not, not really making fun of, but when they traded him Dylan from Leva. the Ravens. Yeah. We're yeah. right back, guys. And, right and that really happened. He he actually said Villa, vanilla wafer on purpose. Yeah, um, it was it was on purpose, by the way. We'll be right back, guys. Yeah. <laughs> to the man hour guys michael buck kaiser with brandon combs now you can find us on twitter at man hour underscore buck and you find combs at man hour underscore combs on the old twitter machine if you guys have not subscribed to our youtube channel yet head over to youtube.com forward slash man hour and subscribe to that youtube channel hit that like button share this with a couple friends we do upload clips every three hours over there 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year so there's plenty of man hour to go around guys so be sure to share this with a couple friends you know sharing is caring here at man hour nation also if you missed any part of the live show whatsoever you can find us on podcast form at manhourradio.com but simply click on the podcast link or head over to iHeartRadio, itunes or spotify and download the podcast so it'd be greatly appreciated if you guys would download that leave us a ranking over there on your podcast form of choice but it is that time of night every monday night we we let brandon combs simmer in the background and then he gives us his eye test so the eye test with combs is coming up right here on the man hour so sit back relax and enjoy because combs is going to bring some heat let's do it it's the eye test baby and there was a comment made after the White Sox Astros game last night that the Astros possibly could be cheating again. Ryan Tapera, after the game, said you just have to look at it. You have to look at their swing and miss ratio at Minute Maid compared to their swing and miss ratio on the road. So I did. And their swing to miss ratio at home. Compared to on the road, when they are on the road, they have 400 over the season, over 400 more swing and misses on the road. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's an average of about six per game. Um, but that's a lot. And maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe it, maybe it's not trash cans this time. I have heard you know people talking about whistling. Uh, the Yankees had actually said something about whistling coming from their dugout earlier in the season. The Oakland A's took exception to maybe some whistling from the dugout coming from the Oakland A's this season. There, there's something to it. 400 
more swing and misses on the road than at home. That is a ton of swing and misses. And then Dusty Baker wants to come out to, today and say, well, you know, if, if you're going to accuse me, you gotta you got to look at yourself. No, Dusty. We have to look at the team that just got caught for this last year. The reason why you're the manager is because of this scandal. And it's still the same players. You wouldn't be the manager of the Houston Astros team if it wasn't for the fact that they all got a deal and got out of trouble for snitching on everybody who was doing it. And then the managers took the brunt of the blow. It's atrocious. And there's absolutely 110% something to it. Just look at the numbers. That's the eye test. And guys, that is going to be it for Man Hour tonight. But before we head out, we got to give a huge shout out to Javi. He dropped a 99 cent super chat. Man, thank you for your cons uh, added support here to the Man Hour at youtube.com forward slash Man Hour. Man, we appreciate everything that you do for us, guys. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same location. Uh, I believe we're going to have spilled soup on. I'm not for sure. Uh, we had to work out our schedules here a, a little bit. But we'll figure out what's going on till tomorrow, guys. And Luke G is special guest tomorrow as Combs is coaching some girls basketball. So good luck to Combs for tomorrow. But Combsy, send us out, big guy. Man, our nation, rise up.